All right, so after the last video, I got tons of comments saying, if you want to turn on the PC power supply, just short the power on to ground. That's exactly what I was trying to do, but it was a little different than I think what some people are thinking I was trying to do. So this is a PC power supply for an ATX uh, case, and this is called a fully modular power supply. That means all these connectors have female jacks on here, and then you can get male plugs that go into them, and that goes out to your computer. So these are kind of nice for a couple reasons. One is you don't have to have a big bundle of cables sticking out that you have to deal with all the time if you're going to be swapping it out or, or doing other things besides use it in a case. But all power supplies for PCs don't actually turn on when you plug them in. They only turn on when you jump the PS on connection to ground, and that's usually done on a computer's motherboard through a power switch that's connected to the PC's chassis. So when you short that uh, power onto ground, it tells this power supply turn on. And so that's what I was trying to do. I plug in this connector, and when I did that, you heard so what happened there was, and this is a little different than it was in that video. Uh, what I had done was I had clipped all these wires short. As you can see, the ends of them are very slightly exposed still. So what happened was I plugged it in and there was enough current going through maybe a couple of the 12 volt leads or a 5 volt and 12 volt or something. It shorted two of these out. What I've done now is I've actually used a hole punch and punched all the rest of these connections out so it's just PS on and ground that are connected and that lets me have this little jumper. So a, a lot of people in the comments were like, oh, they actually make products for that. And I, I have one, I, this, is, this is exactly that. It's a jumper. All it does is goes from, from PS on to ground on the motherboard connection right here. But doing this requires me to have this entire cable connected. And when I'm doing stuff with my Raspberry Pis, I don't wanna have all these cables hanging out, sitting on my desk just to turn on the power supply. I think that's kind of ridiculous. So what I was trying to do uh, was hack this little cable off of here and put it in here. And now this guy actually works because I punched out those wires, but now you know why it wasn't working before and why it blew up this power supply. So the idea is instead of having that giant cable, I can plug in a normal power supply right here, turn it on, now, when you turn on this power supply using this on-off switch, it doesn't actually turn on the outputs of the power supply. To do that, you still have to short PS on the ground. So that's why I have this little switch. And if I plug him in, you'll see that the power supply turns on, and this is how it's supposed to work. It's not supposed to make a very loud sound and smell very bad. Um, so now, for my Raspberry Pi projects or for anything that I need a DC power supply, I can plug in and I can start using the power outputs, for example, I believe this is the five volt side. And, oh, that's the 12 volts. 12 volts there, and let's do five, five on the other side. So now I can use these for hard drives, for uh, computer parts, um, anything like that. And that's why I was trying to do this project. So anyways, to, to anybody else who uh, wants to comment on how much I don't know about power supplies, I don't know a whole lot about power supplies, other than it's not really that safe to open them up like I did here. I actually scavenged the fan out because it's a nice, quiet, large fan, and I'll use that in some of my projects, but I wouldn't open up a power supply like this and stick my hands inside. There's a giant capacitor that's bigger than the one that I almost killed myself on about 10 years ago. Um, and there's other circuits in there that I would not feel too comfortable getting my fingers near. Uh, anyways, so that's the power supply. A lot of people were also asking about this, which is a storage backplane. Now, I actually took off the label that Broadcom had posted on it that said it was for uh, SATA, SAS, and NVMe. Uh, this backplane actually was made by SerialCables.com, and uh, they discontinued this model and have a newer model out, uh, but you might be able to find it used somewhere. Uh, but this is called a storage backplane, and if you look inside, there are... Uh, plugs, they're SAS plugs. So this, this storage backplane takes uh, SAS, SATA, um, SAS 12 gigabits, 6 gigabits, um, SATA 123. Uh, and the cool thing about this guy is this is actually modified from the original form of this unit. And it takes inputs from uh, that Broadcom card. And depending on where you plug in, you can plug in different types of drives to the bays. So you can do U.2 drives, U.3 drives, and um, 
I'm going to get into more of the storage uh, capabilities of U2, U3, and uh, other standards in a future video. But the cool thing about this, this modification is that in these bays, I currently have uh, I currently have this SATA drive. This is an old HP 6 gigabit per second SATA 2 drive. Uh, but you can put in a SATA, SATA uh, 12 gigabits drive. You can put in um, NVMe drives that are U.3 standard. Um, and this, this entire unit is actually a reference unit that Broadcom made. You can, you, I just noticed I have a little tape here because the little LED on the front of this thing gets super bright. Um, but this is something that Broadcom actually made as a reference for the small form factor standard for a universal backplane that accepts all three types of drives, SATA, SAS, and NVMe. I hope to go into a lot more detail on that in a couple more videos, um, but I just wanted to point that out because a lot of people in the comments were asking about this thing, um, and there's plenty of people who who uh, enjoyed the little gag with the fans. Now these fans are very high powered and <laughs> when they're running, you can actually feel the air from them about 20 feet away. It's kind of amazing. Uh, you could probably stick these into a vacuum cleaner and, and it would uh, do a pretty good job sucking up all the dirt off your floor. But you can actually put in a PWM module and get these fans to be a little quieter. I haven't done that yet on here, but I probably will at some point just because it is quite loud. Um, but the reason why a lot of enterprise equipment like this has these super powerful fins is there are a lot of drives. These drives get pretty hot. The SSDs I have don't get too hot, but they do get warm. These drives get pretty hot. There are drives that use the full wattage of each of these slots and they will get super duper hot. And if you don't cool them, they're going to fail. So anyway, that's that's this case. Thanks for the interest in the last video. I, I got a lot of great comments and a lot of great uh, follow ups that I'm going to be going through to talk about uh, with storage, so um, stay tuned.